Welcome to this short video about ORCID IDs and how they can help you to manage your online presence. Making your mark as a researcher can feel difficult enough at the best of times, but what happens if you find that your work is attributed to someone else, or that their work is suddenly attributed to you? Let's look at the example of John Smith. He gets a head start and begins authoring publications before he gains his PhD. Each publisher asks for slightly different forms of information during the submission process. So on some he is listed as John Smith and on others as J Smith. Once he has gained his PhD, he continues to publish and naturally wants to include his new title. So there are now articles by Dr. John Smith and Dr. J Smith. John soon finds that he keeps getting confused with a researcher in a different field. So decides to include his middle initial on future publications. So he's now known as Dr. John R. Smith or Dr. J. R. Smith. A few years later, he writes a book based on his PhD and decides to spell out his middle name on the publication. So it now becomes Dr. John Robert Smith. At this point, you can probably guess the problem. John has used many versions of his name throughout his career, and it's hard to know whether these are all the same person or different people with a similar name. This makes it difficult for researchers interested in John's work to find everything he's published. And it also causes problems for John when trying to assess the impact of his work over time and create a coherent online presence. One potential solution to this problem is to sign up for something known as an ORCID, an Open Researcher and Contributor ID. This is a unique number which will belong to you and follow you throughout your career and will allow you to collect all of your works together under whichever name you choose. You can think about it a little like a DOI for a person, a permanent link that anyone can follow to find out about you and your work. You can collect all of your outputs together in one place and it stops you and your work from being misidentified. Bringing together all of your work is not the only benefit of having an ORCID. You can add lots of information to your profile, including education, grants and awards, voluntary activities such as editorial board memberships and contact details. You can also link any other identifiers you might already have, such as Scopus, LinkedIn or Symplectic to your ORCID account and make it your default online professional profile. Lots of organisations, including many research funders and publishers, are now using an ORCID as a sign in mechanism. This makes it easier to tie all your activities together and means fewer passwords to remember. Many funders are also beginning to require their researchers have an ORCID as part of the grant application process and you will need to include it on any paperwork. You can set up an automatic search of common databases so that your ORCID profile is automatically populated with your works as they're published, which again saves you time and effort. If someone is looking to find your work, having an ORCID makes it easy for them. They can use it to search citation or other databases to find all of the content you've produced from articles to conference papers. Perhaps one of the biggest benefits is that unlike many systems you might use, an ORCID is tied to you rather than to your institution. This means that no matter where your career takes you, you can keep using the profile without having to re-enter all of the information again and again. On the screen, you can see an example of a publicly available ORCID profile. I'm going to point out some of the key features, but remember that each profile will be different according to the needs and the career of that researcher. The actual ORCID number is prominently displayed. This is the number that you will need to include on any grant applications or journal submission forms which ask for it. You can also include links to other websites or researcher IDs that you would like to promote, for example, a Scopus ID. LinkedIn profile or personal blog as seen here. This can be a great way to tie everything together and improve your online profile. Although it's optional, I would recommend including some keywords about your role and research so that people can get an impression of what you do without having to scroll through your whole profile. It also helps to make your profile more discoverable in searches. Think carefully about keywords which sum up what your research is about and use terms that people will look for. The main section of a profile starts with the biography. This is similar to the biography you might include in a conference proposal or on a LinkedIn profile. There's no one magic formula, but you should summarize your role, your research and any other relevant activities. 
The next couple of sections function very much like an online CV. You can include details of your employment and go as far back as you like. In a similar way, you can add your educational history so that people can see your qualifications at a glance. The main body of your profile will contain your works. You can see that ORCID displays all the important information such as title, type of work and date. There are also a couple of other features worth pointing out. You will see that everything displays a source. This can be you as the person who uploaded the content directly to ORCID, as in this example, or a database source such as Scopus or Apollo if you set up the relevant links. The work section also includes a DOI or digital object identifier for the individual work, meaning anyone reading the profile can go straight to their output at the click of a button. Having an ORCID ID has many benefits and can really help to both enhance your online profile and make your life easier. They're quick and easy to set up and can be used throughout your career wherever it takes you. If you don't already have one then consider signing up. It really takes no time at all and can be easily updated to reflect your current work. Although some people just sign up to ORCID to get the number, it's important to populate your profile with your information, keywords and links to your outputs. ORCIDs are indexed by Google and adding more information increases the chance that your profile will be found. Finally, consider linking all of your other online profiles to ORCID to create one central presence. ORCID makes this very easy and it means your profile can be updated at the touch of a button, giving you more time to do your actual research. Many thanks for watching this video. We hope it was helpful.